Hello everyone, welcome back to Day King Cuts. Today we'll be taking a look at a really fun problem from the Indian National Math Olympiad 2024. This problem was actually suggested by one of my viewers, and it's really fun because it consists of a series of small little puzzles, which I'm sure you will also enjoy solving. Now for the INMO, the format of the contest is that contestants are given four and a half hours to work through six problems. So problem four isn't necessarily the easiest problem in the set. But let us now take a look at this problem. So over here we have a combinatorics problem as follows. This problem might be a little bit confusing at first, but I'll try and break down what each sentence is talking about. A finite set S of positive integers is called cardinal if S contains the integer mod S, where mod S denotes the number of distinct elements in S. So what does this mean? A, a set is cardinal if it has uh, if it has n elements, the number n is also inside it. So basically, that's what it means. So let f be a function from the set of positive integers to itself, such that for any cardinal set s, the set fs is also cardinal. Over here, fs denotes the set of all integers that can be expressed as fa, where a is in s. Okay, what does this sentence mean? So basically, you have a cardinal set here. Let's say it is of size n, and for it to be cardinal, the number n is also inside. That's the definition of cardinal. Then what we have is fs. What is fs? fs, you apply f to each of the elements, and then you get another set. Remember, for a set, you do not have repeated elements. So you have f of each of these, you get n numbers, but you collapse the repeated numbers so that you get a set. So the set will actually be of size less than or equal to n. But what this property f has is that whenever this is cardinal, the resulting set you get is also cardinal. Meaning if this has m element, then the number m is also inside the set. Okay, so among all possible valid f, we need to find all possible values of f2024. So do take a moment to digest this problem if you need some time. But I'll assure you that this problem is actually really fun to work through. So. Let us now try and solve this problem. As usual, it is actually really helpful to think about small cases. So from there, we can see what sort of restriction this places on f in order for f to be valid. So what is an example of a cardinal set that is really small? Well, the set 1 by itself is cardinal because it has one element and the number 1 is in it. So in order for f to be valid, what happens when we apply f to this? Well, 1 gets mapped to something, which means it's a set of 1 element, and for it to stay cardinal, it must therefore be 1. So what we can conclude is f1 is forced to be equal to 1. Okay, that looks like a good progress. So why not let's look at sets which are cardinal of size 2. So we can have sets that are of the form something 2, then that will give a set of size 2 and it has the number 2 in it, which is cardinal. But it makes sense to look at 1 comma 2 because we know what 1 maps to under f. So if this were to stay cardinal and we apply, uh, when we apply f to it, what does this tell us about f? Well, firstly, we can have 1 map to 1 and 2 also gets collapsed down to 1. Or 2 gets mapped to something that is not 1. So you have two scenarios here. Now if both 1 and 2 gets mapped to 1, okay, this is indeed cardinal, so that's fine. But if 2 is not mapped to 1, then we will end up with one question mark. And for this to be cardinal, we do need the question mark to be 2. So this tells us that f2 must be either 1 or f2 equals 2. So make sure you get the logic of this step because this is actually the game that we'll be playing throughout this entire solution. Okay, so now we have two possible scenarios here. Let's analyze one of them. So it turns out to be easier to analyze f2 equals 1 first. So when f2 equals to 1, actually it turns out we can already make conclusions about f2024. We can directly look at this set 2, 2024, which is cardinal because it's of size 2 and has the number 2. And what happens when we apply f? It needs to stay cardinal, right? So 2 gets mapped to 1. Of course, maybe 2024 gets mapped to 1. That's one possibility and it will be cardinal. Or 2024 is mapped to something that is not 1, and you get a set of this form. And for this to be cardinal, we need the question mark to be the number 2. 
So this tells us that, well, F2024, under this scenario, this branch of the scenario, must be either 1 or 2. Now this doesn't prove yet that these are indeed possible values because we need to still produce valid F that will end up giving us uh, this property for all possible cardinal sets. And at the same time, F2024 equals 1 or F2024 equals 2. But let us park this aside now. We know that under this branch, this is the limited number of possible candidates for F2024. And now let us look at the other branch. So for the other branch, we have F1 equals 1 and F2 equals 2. Now, unfortunately, we can't directly look at 2, 2024 and get any meaningful results yet. Uh, because we will get 2, comma F2024 and F2024 can still be anything. So let us take a step up and now look at the set 1, 2, and 3. So same thing, 1 and 2 gets mapped to 1 and 2. 3 can either be mapped to 1 or 2, which will give this set, which is already cardinal. Or 3 can be mapped to something that is bigger than 2, and we get this set. And for this to be cardinal, the question mark must be 3. So it looks like F3 has 3 scenarios, and the situation seems to be getting out of hand. But fortunately, we can very quickly rule out one of the scenarios. Specifically, if F3 equals to 2, we can very quickly get a contradiction by seeing that the cardinal set 2 comma 3 gets mapped to just 2. So this set obviously is not cardinal, so we get a contradiction. This shows that this will not give you a valid F. So goodbye to that scenario. And now we have two other scenarios. So when F3 equals to 1, fortunately, what we can do is apply to this very cleverly crafted cardinal set 1, 3, 2, 0, 2, 4. Yeah, it has three elements and a number three is in it, so it's cardinal. So the trick here, why we came up with this, is we know one and three both map to one, which collapses the number of possibilities. We either have this, or again, one, comma, F2024 that is bigger than one. So either F2024 gives one, which is cardinal here, or for this second option to be cardinal, the question mark needs to be two, right? So once again, under this scenario, we will know F2024 is forced to be either 1 or 2. Again, I'm not saying that there will be some valid F, but I restricted the world of possibilities down to again 1 or 2. So let us now focus on this remaining scenario. And you might think, well, is this uh, branching ever going to end? Well, fortunately, now that I have F1 equals 1, F2 equals 2, and F3 equals 3, it seems natural to hypothesize that this forces that Fn equals to n for all n. And indeed, the proof for this is also another clever series of puzzles. The trick is, how do you find the right cardinal sets to apply F2 to give us the conclusion? Now, to prove this claim, we'll be using induction. So suppose F1 equals 1 until Fn equals to n has been proven for some n, where n is greater than or equal to 3. Obviously, it already proves the base case n equals 3. So now let us prove that this is true for n plus 1. So, what is the clever choice of cardinal set to use? Well, naturally, you want to look at 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 until n plus 1. What happens? Well, we have 1 to n will be mapped to 1 to n, and n plus 1 is either mapped to 1 of 1 to n, or something bigger than n, which will give a question mark. But in order for this question mark possibility to be cardinal, the question mark must be n plus 1. And if that is the scenario, then we have proven the next step of the induction hypothesis, which is f n plus 1 equals n plus 1. So assume on the contrary that we are not in this scenario, meaning f n plus 1 is something less than or equal to n, namely the first scenario. Specifically, let us first say that f n plus 1 is equal to k, where k is a number from 2 to n. So namely, k, uh, we don't consider the case where k is 1 yet. And you'll see why in a short moment. So once again, we need to come up with a cardinal set that is very carefully uh, or cleverly crafted so that we get a contradiction. Now the idea is, of course, n plus 1 will be collapsed to k, and we need to use this collapsing to our advantage. So the very carefully crafted set is as follows. We have the numbers 1 to k, but we take out k minus 1, and then we add n plus 1. So there are originally k numbers from 1 to k, but we take out k minus 1 and add it n plus 1. So there's still k elements in this set, and the number k is in it, so this is cardinal. By the way, this shows why we need k to be at least 2 for this 
uh, construction because we are taking out the number k minus 1. Yeah, if k is equal to 1, there's no k minus 1 to speak of. So anyway, this is cardinal, but what happens under the map f? Well, 1 to k gets matched to 1 to k, so 1 to k without k minus 1 gets mapped to 1 to k without k minus 1. And n plus 1 is collapsed down to k. So now we have a set here that is of size k minus 1, but k minus 1 is not inside the set, and this is not cardinal. So you see where the cleverness comes in in this construction? Yeah, why you take out the number k minus 1. So uh, that gives the contradiction for the first scenario here. And of course, we still need to consider a case or the option of fn plus 1 equals to 1. So over here, I'd like to give you an opportunity to pause the video to come up with a cleverly constructed cardinal set to give you the desired contradiction. Now, if you are just here to enjoy the show, let me show you the cardinal set is actually 1, 3, n plus 1. So we need a cardinal set. We have to put in uh, three elements here with the number 3. And why we do this? Well, we know that n plus 1 is going to collapse to 1. And by doing this construction, we actually have this set is mapped to 1, comma 3, which is not cardinal. So hopefully you can come up with an example uh, like this. And by the way, the induction hypothesis uh, suppose is n greater than equal to 3. So n plus 1 is strictly bigger than 3, which is why this set is actually a valid set where 1, 3 and n plus 1 are different. So now you see why we need all the way until f3 equals 3 before we can even reach this, make this claim. So anyway, long story short, we have now proven this claim. And for this claim, it means that f2024 is supposed to be 2024. So now we have three options, right? F2024 is either 1, 2, or 2024. So remember, we have not yet fully solved the problem. We have only limited our world of scenarios into these three options. And in order to finish the problem, we need to come up with a valid F that meets this condition for all possible cardinal sets. And at the same time, gives you the values uh, 1, 2, or 2024 respectively. So for the first case, it's quite obvious. The function fn equals to 1 for all n is a valid function because no matter what cardinal set you start with, you will be mapped to the set that contains just the element 1, which is cardinal. And for f2024 equals 2024, obviously the function you want to consider is fn equals to n for all n. And that again is cardinal, I mean it's a valid function because if you start with a cardinal set, this function does nothing to the set and you will still end up with a cardinal set. And now we need to think of a valid function that will give us f2024 equals to 2. And this is the final fun puzzle that I would like to give you a chance to pause the video to figure out for yourself if you would like to do so. Okay, so for those of you who are just here to enjoy the solution, the function, or rather one possible function, is the following. fn is mapped to 1 for all cases except 2024 is mapped to 2. So you might think, okay, I'm just like very artificially making f2024 equals to 2, right? Because everything else gets mapped to 1. But actually, there's a logic behind this. Why does this function work? Well, we consider two scenarios. If 2024 is not in the cardinal set S, then because everything maps to 1, we will end up with the set just the element 1, and this is cardinal. On the other hand, if 2024 is in the set S, the clever thing is 2024 by itself cannot make the set cardinal. So if S is cardinal and it contains 2024, it must obviously contain some other elements as well. And if it contains some other elements, then that those other elements get mapped to the number 1, whereas 2024 gets mapped to the number 2. And so the, the set 1, 2 is indeed cardinal, and this concludes the proof that f here is valid. So I hope you enjoyed this problem really much because it is really a series of little puzzles trying to come up with the correct cardinal set to use to prove your case. So that's all for today's video and I hope you stay tuned to the channel for more math videos. See you soon.